dude. Hey, welcome to Life on the Moose. Welcome back if you've been here before. We're gonna work on the outside of this cabin today, get everything wrapped up exterior-wise. So I have an idea in mind what I wanna use for the kickstand or the jacks underneath. Let me show you what's going on. The whole system is on a framework of treated two by sixes and the hinges are working fantastic and all the weight is on the hinges. That is what I consider issue number one. Uh, not that they can't take it, I, I really think they could, but I just, I like to over, overdo, overthink probably. But. The other is, I want this, because of the wind we get up here in the hill, I want this to be positively locked in position in both directions. So when it's down, I want it to be locked in that position and not be able to go anywhere. Same thing when it's up. I want it to be locked in that position so when it gets windy, it is positively fixed to the structure in some way. I don't want to attach anything to the steel. So what I'm going to do is I am going to bury a couple of treated 4x4s right below the framework so that the framework can actually rest on those 4x4s and lock to them. That, and then I will have folding legs underneath the panels that will fold down on hinges that will lock to the 4x4s when it's in the up position. So I think we have it solved. I hope you wore your old clothes today. Getting all dirty under there and everything. Okay, why am I showing you this? Well, that four by four post, here's here's what I'm gonna do. That four by four post, this is obviously the underneath side of the cabin. And I am going to cut that four by four so it's notched an inch and a half, which will line up to the, to the joist that's underneath, or actually on top of in this case, this OSB. That way I can tie that four by four in and it's not gonna to rely totally on being sunk in the ground. Positive connection to the cabin. I will sink it in the ground a few inches, add stability. And then on this side of the four by four, on the solar panel side, what I'm gonna do is have a face plate. That face plate is what's gonna be supporting this. Okay, 16 inches with a one inch notch. I think I've caught it. Did you see that last video, by the way? That was the first video that I ever uploaded from anywhere other than my home. So it was interesting. I had to, I went to a coffee shop in the small town, nearest small town nearby. Coffee shop slash clothing store. Great people.
phone died when I was working on the kickstand for the solar panel, but I got it wrapped up. Here, let me show you what I did. So as I mentioned yesterday, I wanted this thing positively locked down in either position, up or down. So what I did, there's a four by four in the back, two by four in front, and that four by four is connected actually to the frame of the cabin as well. What I did here, just simple little hook. And that thing locks it into place, can't go anywhere. All right, so from there, if you want it up, and I have that on both sides, by the way. So check that out. So what you see is the kickstand, actually. That nail stops the kickstand from flopping once you lift up the panel to drop the legs. So what you would do, pull this nail. I'll show you what that does. So now that's locked in down position, attached with hinges up there. So what these fencing staples, that just sits right in there like this. So that when it's in the up position, this simply just holds the two by six into place so it doesn't flop down, it doesn't get caught positively locked in both directions. I think that's gonna be the right angle for the winter. Hey, let's get that trim up there, should we? I just finished cutting the boards for the south end here and I'm gonna put some stain on before I get them up there so I don't have to do it on the ladder and then I thought well I'm gonna be doing some other staining the corners and the trim whatnot around the windows I still have to stain that but before I do that there are some areas that I would like to caulk so I'm gonna go through oh I think there is one area right in here that can you see that from there <laughs> here's a small small crack and I thought, well, I should take care of stuff like that. Right now, um, no matter how good the caulk is, especially new construction, it will, it'll shrink. The materials will shrink, um, even if the caulk doesn't. So double check in a year or two. So I'm gonna quickly go around, just make sure all the cracks are filled. I'm not gonna bore you with it. <laughs> Maybe I should. I'm happy with the product. No, I'm not getting paid by them. But same product on everything we have. Barn, cabin, woodshed. This is just pine, it's not cedar, it's not even fir, and it's not treated. So it is gonna be out in the elements to a certain extent up there. So I wanna do all four sides, just 
to make sure it's sealed all the way around. I don't really don't want moisture getting up in there. I think it's gonna last for, who knows, 40 years? So I think I mentioned that this long 16 foot material that I'm going to use for trim is pine. Actually, what I where I got this from, the steel for the roof up here uh, is 16 foot lengths. And this is actually the packing crate that the steel came in. So <laughs> I'm repurposing this as well. Didn't cost me a penny, a little bit money in stain. But hey, I like saving a dime if I can. Okay, if you could hold that in, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. All right, I'll get it. I don't know how, but I'll get it. Hey, you want to hold the ladder for me? <laughs> If I fall, it'll be in this bush, so it'll be okay.
mama. I gotta do some work, mama. Okay, final project of the exterior. And then that'll be done. Okay, this is gonna be black. I'm painting the door black, the trim black, black hardware, black on black on black. <laughs> and the jams are gonna be black. Got some oil-based paint. No, I'm not sponsored by Rust-Oleum. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Give me a call, Rust-Oleum. Satin black paint coming up. Whoa, dude. <laughs> black paint. It's been a while since I painted with oil base, so wish me luck. I think the key is keeping your brush wet. It tends to pull and leave almost green when it starts to dry. I'm gonna do this very outside edge of the door all the way around because that's what hits the rubber and I want it to dry first. Because I can't leave this door open. Removing blue tape. It's like unwrapping a present. Okay, exterior's done. Well, that's a wrap on the exterior. One more episode. That'll be a wrap on the whole cabin. Next time, we're gonna finish up this interior. Got a little laundry list inside to do as well. Well, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you subscribing. I appreciate you hitting that like button below if you like this sort of thing. Come back next week. We'll do it again.